zipping, stalking her now, creeping a little bit closer as they come to the turn. To La Rocket, Gingadood, and one and a half to Managar being pushed along at this point. Now they're on the swing for home. History awaits Zipping. It's exceptionally first into the straight by a little over a length. Zipping now given full ball by Hall. Will he handle this ground? He's trying very hard. Gingadood switches to the inside. Then Managar. La Rocket dropped off. They're inside the final 400 metres now. Zipping warming to the task. He's moved up to exceptionally. Gingadood comes with a run. Managar's warming up late. Zipping narrowly. He's in for the fight. 150 to go. Gingadood coming at him. But Zipping pins his ears back, and away he goes. Four straight classics. You're a quaddy beauty. It's Zipping to win it by two lengths. Menegar dived it exceptionally, and Gingadood in photos for the... As I turn my mic up, that works better, Beaver. Zipping wins his fourth Zipping Classic, the now Zipping Classic. Uh, fair effort. Uh, I think he ran... Didn't he run fourth in three Melbourne Cups or something yeah. as well? Yeah. Good old horse, an old warrior of a thing. So he used to back um, up and win this one. Yeah, he used to back up every every year and win this as well, which um, we'll be discussing shortly whether uh, anyone else can repeat that dose, more so in the staying race, I think, than the, or the other staying yeah. race of the day, the Sandown Cup. But we'll head to Sandown first. I suppose any news out of the week? Anything we need to oh, no, discuss? No great news, mate. Uh, we just keep plodding along, backing winners, um, mm. doing it for the punters, I think. That's it. Keep doing our best for progroupracing.com.au as well. Uh, check out their, their page for their extensive guides and news stories. They've got uh, a bit of uh, some stories up there on Trumbull. What's the main story today? Trumbull heading into the uh, uh, world, hoping for a second Sandown Guineas with uh, Ali Bohr and uh, Trumbull starting favourite for the Hunter, the Million Dollar Hunter, which we'll talk about in about 25 minutes' time, I'd say. Yeah, so good, um, good stuff up on the site. Yeah, and so plenty of bookie there. offers as well. Yes, yeah, so they've got the bookie offers going. You can follow our stuff up there. and um, So get on board with progetracing.com.au. Sign up, get amongst it. Yep, check that out. So let's get into some winners for tomorrow, though. So we'll head to Stand Down first, being, the I guess, the uh, preeminent end of a spring carnival meeting. Uh, rail is in the true. We are back on Hillside. Hillside tends to be a run-on track, so you tend to be able to make ground up the long straight, more so than Lakeside. Um, expected to play pretty standard. Yeah, I think it'll be. I think it'll be a pretty good fair track. So I'm um, looking for the best horse to win the races. Excellent. So we'll kick off. You get interested in two year olds, or should we just start with the Twilight Glow? Yeah, not not a lot on the two year olds. Uh, un, un, most of them, or the main ones in the market, unproven. Uh, big wraps on Brazen Boy, who won a trial by twenty lengths or something. Yeah, the length of the straight. Yeah. Um, but they've got wraps on the Friedman thing as well. So that'd be good. Good missed the kick, but they reckon it finished off pretty well. So. Um, hard to line up here. Um, yeah, this one go around. I'll, uh, we'll leave that one. We'll head into the three-year-old fillies race, the Twilight Glow, over the fourteen hundred metres, which sees La Mexicana come out of the Mooney Valley Carnival uh, up against a few other up-and-comers. Do you want to kick off here? What do you like? Yeah, mate, I like a bit of Mexicana. You do? Yeah, all right. Be, be all over this, mates. Um, like a hot jalapeno. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I thought it was pretty good uh, last start. Um, Really liked the way it won, sat outside the leader and won, and I think uh, this is set up for it again to be exceptionally hard to beat. So for me, La Mexicana. Cool. I'm going to pour some sour cream on your spicy tip here. And um, I, obviously it was a nice win, and probably, I don't know whether the soft suited it or didn't suit it more, uh, but uh, Twain's Express came out and didn't really frank the form. Um, I think it's the obvious place to start, and I'll, I will be backing it. But the, the two I wanted to throw up, I did say checkerboard. I'd back next start. I thought it was really good leading up the Phillies race. And if I have to, and then if I'm mentioning that, um, so checkerboard's about $18. I think it'll lead here as well. And uh, it was very good first up. Uh, unfortunately for us, when I tipped it at around $18 in that race as well, it just didn't. It just got nabbed by Hindam. So if I like one, I've sort of got to like the other. Uh, so if the favourite's going to get rolled, which... Um, I'm not necessarily suggesting. The other two I'll probably throw into the exotic each way prices there. The checkerboard. The checkerboard, yeah. Going on the specials board. It is going on the specials board. Right. Uh, so around Hopefully $18. you get a feed. So there might be a Cornella play for us, eh? Yeah. Uh, let's head into... Have you, have you had lunch yet or are you just, you're just <laughs> hungry? I'm <laughs> 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 you, Are you right? Oh, God. Oh, um, you haven't been fed for three days. You need That's a winner it. tomorrow. Uh, is there a winner here? Kevin Heffernan, 1,300 metres. What do you like? I like the favourite. I yeah. just looked at this. I thought it was very soft in the straight race. Meets the same field, essentially, and um, is three out of four over the 1,300. Well, it's, isn't it just 
an obvious one? It looks pretty obvious to me as well. Um, given its last run was pretty good, um, it's going to be hard to beat. Soft through the line, it sort of even looked, didn't, yep. he didn't even have to bustle it, and now it's got plenty in the tank here. Yeah, I thought the only danger may be order of command who goes well down the straight, but yeah, for me, I've... I've gone for the number two as well. Yep. Uh, I th- yeah, if there was a Dane... And the other one that will run well here is Streets Avalon coming back from the Group 1 company, I think. Uh, it's been chasing Buffalo River and a couple of good ones. Uh, probably hasn't quite run out the 1600 last time in a very fast race. And um, if there's any less of it, can can run quite well here. But I think Kemper last is probably my best of the day, to be honest with you. Yeah, nice. Uh, the Doveton stakes over 1,000 metres. This is a trick leader one. A uh, thousand metre land here. I I couldn't get too excited. Did you like any? Yeah, tough race. Uh, open market. Uh, look, if I was forced to have a pick, I'm looking around Profit's thumb. Thought it gets uh, third up uh, tomorrow. First two runs have been okay. A third and a third uh, suited down the straight. And it's got some form against some decent horses. We'll run on. What uh, price is it at the moment? Profit's? Uh, nearly $10. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, it gets plenty. You know, the, sh- the, the long straight's going to suit. Um, and, yeah, I think it's definitely a knockout chance. Yeah, I couldn't really stamp anything here. I, I definitely respect profits. And uh, I'll probably play around that, the one cor- Coruscate and Human Nature, all about $10. I, I don't – haven't made my mind up which way, but potentially back all three each way even. Um, best result could be profits in Human Nature. Yep. Funny little – yeah, sometimes these thousand meter races are, are weird little yeah. races, and I think yeah, probably the ten and the six, both ten dollars. You know, good each way play there. I think. Um, not much more to add. No. The Sandown Stakes, a Group Three, fifteen hundred meter race. Interesting clash of uh, Kenya, who coming off a five length win at Mornington. I'm not quite sure what it beat up. Buffalo River back from the Group Ones, and uh, Junipal back from the Group Ones. Um, struggled to get my head around this race a little bit. What do you do? Um, yeah, it's a good race. Like the three and I and Clasm uh, back to a bit of form last start mm. uh, isn't without a chance. So a, a good little, good little affair. A lot will depend on the speed. Yep. Uh, which certainly worried me uh, for for a horse like Kenya. But geez, it was impressive first up. I know um, it, was, it, it was in a weaker affair, um, but it is. It's a horse that's uh, imported here. And it carried a big weight, 62 kilos, and beat them and beat them easy. Probably could have won by more, to be honest. Um, drops. Do you think it um, takes on Buffalo River or sits behind? Sits behind, I think. Yeah. So it's it gets a seven kilo drop there for a five or six lengths win that could have been more, and gets a four kilo pull in the weights uh, from Buffalo River and Juniper. So I look, I think Kenya's probably very, very, very hard to beat in this race. Um, I'm not sure about how well Buffalo River's going. I know it's had a couple of seconds. Maybe suited here if it gets. A I'm hoping it gets. Um, if it gets sole lead, I think it's hard to get past. Yeah. If the two up front pester it, which I, 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 I think I agree. I think Kenya might just drop in behind and yeah, have one to go past. Then um, yeah, if, if there is pace on and Junipal's the only other danger for me. Yep. Um, I'm I'm just taking on Iconoclasm. So you're thinking yeah, Junipal and... Yeah, I think Kenya's got, got to be hard to beat. Yep, cool. So Kenya, the six there for for Beaver. Uh, race six is the... Uh, what do we got here? The group two mile for the three-year-olds. Asar coming back from just getting nutted by Crosshaven against a, a bit of a weaker field. Uh, which way have you gone? Yeah, it looks hard to beat, doesn't it? Yeah. It looks really hard to beat. Um, I tried to find something to, to knock it out, and most of these other horses have... You know, some of them have never won a race um, or have struggled to win a race. Looks, just looks a good thing um, in, a, in an affair like this. I know Sweet Reply is probably more in the market given some hard luck stories last run, but, you know. Yeah, I, I would have backed Sweet Reply maybe at 7 bucks. I don't want to back it at yeah. $8.50. Yeah, I hope that just being held up it wasn't a bit flattering and people are sort of, the thing about a bit much the thing credit. about um, being held up and being unlucky doesn't mean you're going to win. We've, as it's been shown plenty of times, even since we've been doing this show, it doesn't mean you, you're going to win a race. It nah. doesn't. You know, nah. it's over bet a lot. And, um, and the other horse is a good horse. So for yeah. me, I can't I can't find a play outside of the favourite. That's not that's not luxurious odds, but yeah, that's certainly where I'd be going. I th- I couldn't imagine starting any shorter. 
I, th- I would think it would start longer. What was it dollar seventy five? Dollar seventy five. Yeah, I think it will start longer. Um, yeah. I have been wrong. Um, I know it's hard to believe. Uh, but yeah, I think the favourites obvious there. Uh, the, the sound down cup of thirty two hundred. Uh, uh, yeah, a tough again, a, a tough, interesting race. My Melbourne Cup form here versus the uh, the sin to win after we we bagged it for uh, securing its pension the other day and winning the Macca's run. But yes. um, I. I was giving Miami Bound a rough chance in a Melbourne Cup, so I think I've got to tip it here. It was a very fast run Melbourne Cup. Um, Twilight Twilight Payment put him to the sword, so, you know, I don't know how well... There's not a great record for knowing how well you back up. Yes. Over 3,200, is there? So if no. there's anything left of her, I think she's the best horse. But anything else wouldn't surprise me. What are you thinking? Yeah, look, I, I really found it hard to line this form up and get a really good spin on... Uh, who and what and how? Um, Sin to win was was impressive last start. Cariff, uh, I just don't. I just don't know. You probably, if you go back to Miami Bound two starts ago, as you said, it was a few people found it in the cup, uh, which suggests that it should be able to run a good race here. Edo James wasn't far behind it in the cup, and I thought Sweet Thomas, uh, its run last start was pretty good behind Sin to win. Uh, produced the last, the fastest last two hundred in that race. So maybe just calling out for this. And did did win the um the winter Sydney Stayers Cup as well. Yeah, that's right. There. So I, I'm probably just leaning towards Sweet Thomas. Mm-hmm. Um I think at the nine dollar play in this field's probably the the way to go. Um slightly in front of my Miami bound and seem to win. No, that's cool, yes. I end up with especially given its favourite, I end up thinking this when I went back and watched Sin to win it was short margins to Yonkers and um some midweek oh, I know that gay thing won in in town in Sydney, but it doesn't really count. Sort of average yeah. form. I thought, you know, I've got a default to the Melbourne Cup form. That said, you know, Edda James did win a Sydney Cup too, but um, maybe outclassed here. Maybe the toughest stay at Edda James, but I think more class Miami bound. Cariff might be the one that um, from the different form line that knocks them all off. So yes, I don't think we've answered anything there. Uh, yeah. In short, yeah, Beavers with the six sweet Thomas. While I, while I've got uh, Miami bound on top. Maybe a bit a easier affair, maybe not. Uh, the Zipping Classic, 2,400 metres. As we said, run one by Zipping uh, four times in a row. We do send, tend to see some backup horses come here from the Cup, not this year. Um, more so Geelong and uh, Caulfield form here. Avelius starting favourite, Beaver, is that where you're starting? I don't think it is uh, any easier affair. I think there's, no. again, there's probably... Um, a shout for the top six in the market here, and you could find a good case for all of them. Avilius, yeah, look, I think Avilius's recent form hasn't been as bad as what it might look on paper. Mm. You know, three starts back, ran a nice second, um, then followed it up with a... You forgive the Caulfield Cup form. Yeah, uh, the well, it ran run. six, and, yeah, it wasn't, and it got chopped right out. It got chopped right out, so it could have finished closer in the Caulfield Cup, and, you know, as we've just talked about, the Melbourne Cup. Um, it's never really a chance, so, look... Uh, back in class here, looks hard to beat. Sounds going well without winning, which worries me. Uh, future score, I think, is a huge chance. Yeah, um, thought its win two starts back was pretty good. Uh, last start wasn't wasn't a bad run, so I think it's a chance. Lord Belvedere, if you've put a line through last start, uh, had three wins in a row, mm. um, and they were all all um, decent runs. Brimham Rocks, I can't really find, albeit it's always a roundabout and Princess Jenny won well last start. Um, so it's really tough. I'm leaning Avilius just in front of future score. Okay, great. I'm going to I'm gonna stick with sound. Missed by a pimple to Ash run. Um, would have been a nice result that day, but it was a good run. Uh, from that gate, potentially, maybe he has to go a bit further back there is the only concern, um, but I'm just going to stick solid there with, from, with uh, sound. A little bit scared of Lord Belvedere. I didn't have my quaddie, but I'm actually going to add it in now because, yeah, you're right, did pull up lane last start and was very impressive before that. Um, yeah, the other two go in the quaddie. Yeah, I just jumped off sound because I was, I'm sick of, as we talked about previously, hard luck stories. Yeah, yeah. And it always seems to be a hard luck story with that horse. <laughs> That's fine, and 909 days. For, might be hard luck for me. Uh, um, 909 tomorrow. days is a long time out. Yeah, but, that's what uh, I'm talking about, hard luck, right? But Cinderwin, I think, did it after 740. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which some of the quality detriment. of the horses running around yeah, exactly. here tells you the story. Yep. Um, the Eclipse Stakes, 800 metre Group 3. 
a few come through the again through the Mooney Valley form. Uh, I didn't find this much easier either. I'm just gonna have on top here though. For me, I'm gonna put uh, I should put Sosie Bond on top. I thought its run was pretty good. Uh, at around the ten dollar mark, was pretty good. Um, chasing Purple Sector it was a blanket finish. Um, but if I can forgive both those, not for so much forgive, but there's a little bit of merit in both those last two runs. I know it is Sosie Bond, so it's only has one for six months. Um, from all two, Hoi Ying is just flying. Um, yep. Not sure if the dry suits as much as a heavy wheel, but it, it's a different horse now with Stokes, and he's got it flying this prep. Um, just went away a little bit from from the others, Holmesman and and um, Shot of Irish is another one that I've just sort of had enough of. Yeah, I went for all two, Yuan, um, the number four. I, th- I think it's flying at the moment. Uh, winning form in a field like this is good form. Um, Third up, going well, right distance, uh, trainer's got it flying. So for me, at $6.50, that was the way to go, way to play. Yep, great. Yeah, no, they're, they're the two bets um, for me, the, the two we've mentioned. Uh, let's wrap up with the Summon Stakes, 1,500-metre race for the mares. And uh, does it get any easier? Probably not. I'm going to – I've been with Sydney form all the way through the carnival, so I'm going to tip Tricky Girl here. She's come back in pretty good order. Just missed behind Savitiano. Before that was uh, just missed behind Positive Peace. Um, hopefully back to a bit better footing uh, suits her as well. And I, all these are sort of tied to each other now. And uh, I'm not that keen on any of them. So I'm going different form with Tricky Gal. Um, and I will be having a, something small on La Tigressa, who's complete forgive last start when it completely blew the start up the straight. Yep. And you're getting 35 bucks tomorrow. Yeah, nice. I've gone for Missile Mantra. Uh, thought last last run was pretty good. Uh, ran just on a length uh, behind six behind Shout the Bar and Odium yep. um, in a in a good quality race. Uh, we know those horses are going well. Start before that was less than a length uh, at Mooney Valley behind Sovereign Award and Fabric. So that's good form. And prior to that was third at Flemington behind Sierra, Sierra Sioux um, a length. So for me that's. That's pretty genuine form coming into a race like this. It's drawn a little bit wide, but hopefully that will suit and uh, Johnny Allen can get some cover. Not not one of the jockeys I catch all that often, um, but look, in a race of this nature, uh, if it can get a little bit of cover, then I think it could be the one to hold out at the end. Gate 14, probably uh, not the probably worst helps spot to be. At that, that time of the yeah, day. Definitely. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um Nice. Uh, we're going to wrap up your thoughts before I do the quaddy. Uh, your best in value for the day. My best... Comes up uh, in the second race, the top weight. Um, La Mexicana uh, is my best of the day. And my value was going to be, and now I can't find it, but here, Profits Home. Oh, yeah, in the 1,000 uh, metre race. Race, yep. three, race four, number six, around Great. the $10 mark. Great. I'm going to, I'll throw out my quaddy first of all. Uh, the uh, Sandown quaddy, three, four, five, into one, four, and eight. And now I'm really scared of Lord Belvedere as well, so I might add him in there. Uh, one, two, four, and ten. Home with four, six, seven, eight, thirteen, seventeen. A couple of roughies in that last leg. Uh, about twenty-three percent for that. My best of days, Kempalasa. I think very hard to beat. And I'll make my value the checkerboard. Checkerboard up against your Mexican. Yep. Your Mexican meal in the uh, in the second. Yep. Don't forget to check out Pro Group Racing, as we said, for for their guides and news stories. And we will head to Newcastle for Hunter Day, another million dollar race. After I um, wondered aloud how many million dollar 1300 meter races are, it turns out there's another one tomorrow. So, um, there you go. whatever that means. Uh, interesting race. Uh, everyone wants to tell me this is the best track in the world. Um, Newcastle, they all seem to rave about it. Uh, probably getting good money to be told to do that as well. But uh, should generally plays pretty well, Newcastle. Yep. Trains well. Um, essentially, a lot of these races are midweek races, I thought. Um, but a couple of good ones, and I think there's some um, interesting betting opportunities. Are you, you got anything in the first two? or you? No, 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 I was leaving the first one alone. I, yep. I couldn't find anything in the 900 scamper, so happy to move on to yeah, there. I, and I dodged the highway. Have you got anything? The highway, I uh, dodged the same as you, so cool. open affair. If you like something, go back it. You're going to get plenty of value and happy days. So we'll kick off in uh, the Benchmark 88, race three, uh, over the 1850. And... Um, not the most exciting race. Uh, I thought Gay's horse here that's second up in Australia. I know it's had uh, one run in 18 months or nearly two years. 
I thought his trials were quite nice, and I mm. thought there's nothing here that um, outside of Fortress Command that's coming back quite well since being gelded. Yep. Uh, quick backup, obviously, and Nash, obvious danger, but I thought um, Fatty and I think it's been backed. Yeah, it has yeah. been backed. Um, you see it around well. I think they're the only two hopes. Vaddy in for uh, six or seven from six for me. Any dad? I had exactly the same. I couldn't um, I couldn't find anything out of those two, but Vaddy and I thought looks pretty close to a good thing and I thought probably should be a little bit uh, shorter than this. Uh, obviously had a little, few little problems, but it looks cherry right ready to go based on its trials and not that Waterhouse is a horse, uh, is a trainer whose horses I, I tip a lot, but this one looks one to be on for me. Great. Um, yeah, like you said, it's always good when you find gays, gay, you want a gay, so... Gives you more confidence. Uh, let's head into race four, the uh, thousand meter, twelve hundred meter benchmark seventy two. Um, is this Superium's day tomorrow? Well, it has to be. Has to win this surely. It has to. If it doesn't, um, it's good night, Irene. Yeah. Um, it, you know they've held it to try and get a better quality track. It's a good track tomorrow. I expect it to remain that way. It gets drawn wide enough uh, to be. In the running line, pull it out at the top of the straight. Louise Day get, takes the claim, 60 kgs in this affair. If it doesn't win this, it'll never win another race. Yep. Um, yeah, just completely forgive all. It doesn't go in the wet. Completely forgive that whole prep where I, I said at the time was to go around. Um, you take them out. It's three eight starts, 3 two, one. Um, Should win this under Louise Day. The, the horse with some talent that's trialled okay um, is St. Covered Spirit. The double figure horse there as well. Um, I think it'll run well if you're looking for something away from the favourite. It's a, it's a, a, I think it's a nice horse, and does have form back through Ribasaki, Dawn Passage, and the like. So uh, for me, that's the the only danger. Disappearium, who, um, like I said, this will be the end of uh, my love for Fiddy if it doesn't win this race. The uh, benchmark seventy eight over the mile is race five, and um, yeah, how do you go here? Tough. Is Prospectus going to run here or in Brisbane? Do we know? I uh, is it still in here? Yeah, it's still it's that. still in the market here, and I haven't Drawn jumped five. into Doombin. I'll, I'll have a quick squeeze while no, you, you do that. I'll um, I'll suggest yeah, it's, it's out of Brisbane. So okay, so it's coming here. Yep. Okay. Uh, are you interested in it? I think it's a, got a really good chance if they were bringing it here, uh, purely on the basis that um, the Newcastle track should suit Prospectus. It's been running in some of the Brisbane. Uh, tracks a little bit shorter straight, 